Today is a very special episode because on this date, September 20th in 2008, the world said goodbye to Cartoon Network's Toonami. On March 17, 1997, Cartoon Network launched a block of programs for their weekday afternoon time slot, but little did they know what a phenomenon it had become. In its early years, the Toonami broadcast consisted mainly of older programs such as Thundercats, Reboot, and Batman the Animated Series, alongside some old school anime programs like Voltron, Robotech, Sailor Moon, and Dragon Ball Z. These are the shows that my generation grew up watching and now a whole new audience had been introduced to them. Most of these programs have probably not been seen on TV in about 15 years prior to Toonami's launch. And the only time I remember seeing Sailor Moon or Dragon Ball on American TV was on a local channel at about 5 in the morning on weekdays. And don't ask me what I was doing up at 5 a.m. on a Wednesday watching Sailor Moon. As years went on, they broadcasted a lot of other older programming like Super Friends, G.I. Joe, Ronin Warriors, and G-Force, or Gotchamon if you prefer, as well as some Cartoon Network original programming such as Powerpuff Girls, Megas XLR, Justice League Unlimited, and the greatly underrated 2002 He-Man remake. But what most people associated with Toonami was its anime lineup. After the success of DBZ and the rest of the anime they've shown, they decided to bring on more and make it their regular format. And so they brought on many great shows to US audiences that may have gotten overlooked by the general public. They brought on shows like Outlaw Star, Roroni Kenshin, Big O, Tenchi, and various Gundam series. However, many people criticized that some of these shows were not necessarily meant for kids and had to be heavily censored for daytime TV. So Toonami launched a new program called Midnight Run. Sort of a precursor to its younger brother Adult Swim, they showed many of their anime programs but didn't hold back on the blood and violence. A lot of the fans appreciated that. Toonami's growing popularity gave way to other programs like Rising Sun, which took place in the morning, a partnership with Kids WB, and a Saturday night time slot to add to it all. Yup, Toonami pretty much ruled the universe. They also had a variety of shows that were only available online, and it was where I first saw one of my still favorite anime, Record of Lotus War. As time went on, many other programs came and went. Many in my opinion were very underrated, like Cyborg 009, the 2003 Astro Boy remake, and Dot Hack Sign. Which by the way was only shown for about 2 minutes and then for some reason was pushed back to the wee hours of the morning. Don't know who made that decision. And then there was Zoids. Zoids was an okay show, but essentially it was there just to sell toys. Yeah. At one point they even got to produce their own anime. IGPX or Immortal Grand Prix. Overall it was okay, but the fact that they had their own original anime is all kinds of awesome. Then program selections began to get a little strange. Cardcaptor Sakura? Prince of Tennis? Hamtaro? What? Why are these shows on Toonami? Then some weird programs started popping up. There was Rave Master, which I don't even know how to describe properly. Duel Masters, because the world needed another show based off a card game with a spiky haired main character. SD Gundam, which I gotta be honest, I kinda liked. And Boba Bo 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 Bo, which I swear to god only existed to out what the fuck every other anime in existence. Then there was Dice. Yeah, remember Dice? Me neither. These shows had varying success, but the biggest flop in Toonami history was easily Wulin Warriors. Wulin Warriors was a show from Taiwan about some martial arts fighting puppets. Sounds cool, right? Well, actually it kinda was. Unfortunately, only two episodes aired before being pulled from TV. Why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because it suffered from the worst English dub ever! I thought the Oracle told you to stop making up stories about ninjas or else you'd lose your sword privileges. No, 
Sensei Oracle told me to stop eating garbage with the pandas or else I'd lose my dignity. What are you doing? My alcohol. Scar! Hey, did I ever tell you about this one time I found an owl in my yard? I threw a shoe at it and then it started convulsing like, bark, bark! then it ate the shoe. Hardcore anime fans, I'd like to address you specifically if I could. The next time you complain about your favorite anime getting messed up by an English dub, I want you to go back to that clip. Doesn't seem so bad anymore, does it? You know what this means. Uh, pizza party? No, it means we must return to the academy. To eat pizza? What? No, to consult with the oracle. The pizza oracle? There is no pizza oracle, Scar. <sighs> so you keep telling me. For God's sake, Sean Schimmel, you are the voice of Goku. Show a little pride. <laughs> like that's going to stop me. And don't even get me started on the theme song. Woo-Land Warriors. I'm Lone Sword with my training brother Scar. We on a mission to try to find the missing seven stars. So Woo-Land, the scarab is bent. I'm Woo-Land, the land. Grab the Woo-Land sword in my empty hand. It's gonna be dangerous. Oracle trained us at the mountaintop academy. Scarab wants to battle me. Who will win the duel in Woo-Land? Lone Sword and Scar. Yeah, 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 G-Money Dog. Woo-Land ain't nothing to fuck with. Warriors. Then they brought on some shows that were already well known, but in retrospect might have been a mistake. There was the 4Kids version of One Piece. Yeah, fans of One Piece, or really anyone who saw this, doesn't need me to tell them how terrible this was. Then we had Naruto. <sighs> Alright, honestly I don't have any personal problems with the show, but did it really need more fans? Now, about 2006-2007, the anime fad that hit America began to lose its momentum. Ratings for anime on TV started to lower, and unfortunately, Toonami's vast world had been reduced to only their Saturday night time slot. So in its closing years, Toonami had to start relying more on other Cartoon Network shows to help keep them on the air, like Teen Titans, Samurai Jack, Stormhawks, and Ben 10. There were many other shows broadcast throughout their time, all of varying popularity, but there was so much more to Toonami than its TV show lineup. One other thing to note was the music. During each bump, commercial, promo, or really anything that bared the Toonami name was always given an original ambient tune to the background, some of which was even eventually released on a CD. Speaking of music videos, they even had a few specials where they played some tunes from Gorillaz and Daft Punk. They also held other special events on occasions. They had movie specials like A Month of Miyazaki, where they showed a Miyazaki movie every week. Then there was Giant Robot Week, where they showed episodes of various mecha anime, including Evangelion. I don't know what they were thinking when they did that. But as great as everything was, we all know what really made Toonami great. Its host. In the beginning, Toonami's host was a CG Moltar. I guess there was supposed to be some continuity between Toonami and Space Ghost Coast to Coast. I, I don't know. But shortly thereafter, we were introduced to Tom, a pint-sized, pot-bellied robot who would remain the host for the duration and was an instant hit with the fans. But what was it about Tom that we loved so much? Was it his look? His spaceship, the Absolution? God, that's a sweet ride. The fact that he was voiced by Steve Blum? Maybe it was the fact that he was more than just a mascot. When Tom spoke, it felt like he was talking right at you. He gave us game reviews. Toonami gives Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube at 10 out of 10. Nice work, Mr. Mario. <laughs> Toonami gives Wind Waker for the GameCube 10 out of 10. <laughs> 16 years of going strong. Yeah. Toonami gives Final Fantasy 10 an 8 out of 10. And even went on adventures in a few of his own interactive week-long miniseries. The first one was called The Intruder, where some alien blob starts eating the ship. It was actually pretty intense, but there's one part that everybody remembers. Oh my god! The fans freaked out when this happened. But luckily, Tom backs up his data and gave himself an upgrade. Oh yeah, Tom was back and better than ever! This was the first of his upgrades, as Tom went through a few others. Tom 3 was introduced after another miniseries called Trapped in Hyperspace. 
He was even bigger and more badass than ever. Then one day we saw this promo. Nobody really knew what it was, but as it turns out, it was a teaser for Tom's fourth upgrade. Another upgrade? Oh my god, his upgrades have gotten progressively more awesome! I can't wait to see what this one looks like! You guys ready to make the magic happen? Alright boys, let's do this. What the hell is this? What happened to the cool helmet and the absolution and Sarah? Who are these guys? What the hell is that thing? So, what happened? Well, I did my best to dig something up, but I found nothing. We got no explanation for this. So, yeah. This is the new Tom. And the fans hated it. Oh, they hated it. But you know what? It doesn't matter what some corporate exec might say he needs to look like. Deep down, he's still Tom, damn it. Who cares if he looks like a cyborg emoticon? But unfortunately, Toonami came to a rather abrupt end, but at least it was given a proper send-off. Well, this is the end, beautiful friends. After more than 11 years, this is Toonami's final broadcast. Until we meet again, stay gold. He even gave us the bang from the end of Cowboy Bebop. I cannot think of a more appropriate way to end it all. After Tom's final goodbye speech, fans on the internet went nuts. I heard talk of people actually openly weeping. I've never heard of anything like this. Toonami truly did impact a lot of people's lives.